G'day, I'm Michael McDwarcy. Model review is a little different today. Sitting here, I'm at my edit desk, not my bench in the studio, because the weather outside is horrible. It's spring, but it's really crappy. It's windy and rainy, and I can't, I don't really want to go outside if I can avoid it. And today, I'm going to be looking at this product here, which I've been using for a week, and I've had really good results with until I started to make this video. And then it broke, <laughs> which is kind of tragic. It's kind of sad. Um, but it is really useful that I spent a week using this before I decided to do the review video. It's even more useful that it broke as I was doing the review video, or maybe immediately just before, but it doesn't work like it should now. Um, but I'm going to walk you through the claims, and we're going to look at the realities of this product, which I had great hopes for because I've got a lot of Toolkit RC stuff, and generally speaking, it works pretty damn well. And this is the Toolkit RC M4Q, M4Q Quad Smart Charger, and it's a it's a cheap charger. It's not expensive at all. And the big benefit of this one is, well, it runs on mains or it'll run on DC input. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the little unit itself. It's not unattractive, but it's not particularly styly. Um, it doesn't have a screen protecting fingerprints. You get a lot of fingerprints on it. You can see me. It's very reflective. Hello there. How are you all in YouTube land? Um, it's got two simple controls, a scrolly wheel, which you can also click, and a button for exiting. It has a Toolkit RC branding on it, which we've all seen on a number of products now. Um, it has four ports, so you, you can charge up to four batteries at a time, but note the balance ports only support up to 4S, so it'll only charge up to 4S. No 5S, no 6S, okay, just 4S. Um, there's not much else on it. There's a bit of ventilation holes in the bottom, which it really needs because it does get kind of warmish. Um, and on the back, we've got a DC input, so you can run it off a DC power supply or off a large LiPo or whatever you want to do, just like the other toolkit charges. There's a micro USB connector there. There's a fan, and then you've got the mains connector there to run on US or other countries, like 110 to 240 volts. That's fine. Now, they do call this a 200 watt charger, but only if you're supplying it with your own power supply. If you're running from the mains, it's only a 100 watt charger, which means 25 watts per battery, which is less than two amps on a 4S pack. So you're not, you're not gonna charge at 1C, maybe a little over 1C, if you've got some 1300 mil packs you wanna charge, and it does get toasty warm. Um, it does have a fan though, so it has some built-in cooling, so really, it, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. You get also a USB cable in the box. It doesn't have USB power out like some of the other um, toolkit chargers, which is a shame. I found that USB power out to be quite useful at times. So you can't charge your USB devices off this one, but everyone's got a million and one wall wall chargers you can use for that. All right, so let's plug it in and look at how it works. Or in this case, doesn't quite work. All right, I'm going to plug this into the mains, and I want you to listen very carefully. This, as I say, it has a fan. Listen very carefully to this. There's a lot of fan noise there. This fan is faulty, I think. It's it's not either not mounted right or it's imbalanced or something, but it makes a horrendous noise at times, um, which it's a cheap charger. So maybe they just used a cheap fan. I don't know. So we've got a, a we've got a four cell pack here. It's a 1000 milliamp four cell nanotech battery. Let's plug it in to port one. And then the balance connector plugs in here. I'm not that, I don't, I'm not much of a fan of these type of connectors because it's easy to plug it in the wrong way if you're not careful. I've always taken great care to make sure I do plug it in the right way, of course. So there we go. And immediately we start getting some numbers on the screen, some useful numbers. And it's, this, this camera doesn't do very good screen um, videoing. So I'll tell you what's there in case you can't see. It says this battery is currently at 15.74 volts and it's about 3.9 volts per cell. So you get a little information, that's quite handy. Other stuff on the screen, it's telling us what the AC voltage is from the from the AC power supply. So it's putting 18.2 volts into this from the AC power supply. Once it's converted down, it tells us how much current is coming from the AC power supply, so how much has been drawn, the number of watt hours that it's used up, the number of watts it's currently pushing into batteries, and the temperature it says 37 degrees, because I've been running this, and they're trying to figure out why it doesn't work. Anyway. We'll show you how it does work. So what I'm going to do here is, as I say, there's two controls. Let's click on, well, first of all, this first button here, you see it moves this little dot around. So you select the channel that you want to activate or configure. So let's go to one, and then you click the scroll wheel, and you can set your battery type. As with, this is basically the same software in all the other toolkit charges. You can do all your battery types there. You can set the cell count there, or you can set it to auto. It's pretty good on auto. You can set whether your storage or charging, your end voltage, and your charge current. So I'm just going to go down here to this will make it go to charge. There we go. One thing I've noticed with the scroll wheel, it is sometimes quite stiff. It's like sometimes it doesn't want to turn. You, when you're trying to push it, sometimes you can accidentally click it, which is a pain in the backside. It is cheap. As I say, this is a very cheap charger. Is it a good value charger? I don't know, but it is certainly a cheap charger. Right, let's go down to start. 
and it says that just make sure you want to charge it to that voltage yes let's go so i've set the charge current there to i forget what i had it set to is it two amps or three amps we'll find out in a moment see the charge current gradually ramps up there and 0.2 and you can see here also the current going out of the ac spice going up as well and the total wattage that this thing is actually putting into the battery is increasing here we go 1.2 so two amps i've got it set to charge at two amps everything looks fine if we squiddle this wheel we can see it should eventually start telling us what the internal resistance of the battery is it takes a little while to work that out it's not showing anything yet but we'll come back to that later so this is just like all the other toolkit rc chargers very straightforward very simple it tells us the number of milliampere hours we've put in and that figure constantly goes up of course as we charge have we got any internal resistance yet nothing yet okay so effectively we've got that times four except on this one we no longer have that times four because port four has failed it just failed i was i was setting this up to do some um to do the review and this stopped working just i'll show you what i mean let's let's stop this charge i have a button here we'll go to stop well, one nice feature you can do you can change the current while it's charging which is handy if you want to we'll go to stop and i will unplug the battery from the port number one you see the numbers will disappear these are quite tight these connectors i'll plug it into port four reconnect the balance port and we'll see all the same numbers start popping up so it recognizes the battery is there let me get this in as i say this is a bit of a pain in the backside this setup but it, i guess it is built down to a price here we go so now we're back got our voltage all the same stuff before so let's select that channel number four let's go in there lipo four cells charge two amps let's do that start okay and let's watch what happens let's watch what happens absolutely nothing <laughs> it's not charging it will not charge it says it's charging it says charging but it doesn't charge this port doesn't function it was working because i was charging a whole bunch of these these little 650 milliamp packs the other day for my sub 250 quad it was working fine today it's just not charging it doesn't work so reliability here could be a bit of an issue it's um yeah it's broken and i've only been using it a week so i find it hard to say oh you know rush out and buy this it could be a reviewer's curse but at some stage you've got to say well, you know reviewer's curse is it really a curse or is it just the fact that some products aren't made to the right standard but as i say this is a very cheap charger it doesn't cost a lot of money so if you're buying cheap well, you're not going to get bulletproof reliability you're going to make a decision is cheap the same as value no it's not the same as value a, a charger that you buy that breaks in the first week it's not a good value proposition at any price I love toolkit stuff. I don't like this. This is, I was getting all ready to rave about this thing because I've been using it for a week and so wonderful being able to charge four batteries, especially with the little 650s, which I can charge it um, at almost at 2C, uh, almost 2C, that's fine. But when it just broken like that, meh, I can't recommend this as a product. I can only review the products that are sent to me. This is what was sent to me. And if it doesn't work, I can't really, um, sort of say hey hey go and buy it so let's stop let's just prove to you that this is working on the other ports i'll plug it into port number three so it's now a three port charger <laughs> which okay fair enough you might think well hey just use three ports but if if one port's broken how long before the others fail let's go here we go with the voltage has come up again we're all good to go let's go to start here we go and you'll see the current will ramp up on this one yeah let's see it's starting to here we go 0 0.06 0 0.1 up to 0 0.18, 0 0.2, it'll get up to 2 amps eventually. And when it comes up, there we go, 2 amps, that's working fine. That's working fine and dandy. There's no problems with that. Well, there we go. This has already started measuring the internal resistance of the battery. So, yep, three ports work fine. Fourth port, it's buggered. Um, yeah, draw, take what you wish from that. I can only show you what I'm experiencing here. Um, let's just stop that. Uh, one thing to note this is not a very good discharger it has a storage option if we go in here you can see we go down to the mode where you've got storage but it's if you have to discharge your batteries this is not a good option it's incredibly slow um, the fact that i discharged several batteries the last time i used this it was not for charging but for discharging maybe that toasted port four i don't know but the other ports didn't toast so i i have no idea um, what can i say and again just to remind you let me just disconnect this battery just to remind you that when I unplug the mains power, I listen again to that fan when I plug it in. Where are we? Get the right connection. Oh, 
Listen. That fan is just unacceptably noisy. So it's a great idea. It worked great for a week. I wish it was still working. I wish I could trust it. I wish I could rely on it because to be totally honest, I'm using the two port charger, which is really, really good. I love their two port charger. Uh, with a lipo in the field and this would be great just whack a big 6s in there and charge all your little 850 or 650 packs all day long and charge them four at a time so you, you're never out of the air but it's only a three port charger now and the fan's dicky um straight out of the box so talk at rc fantastic idea um when it works it's great but as a value proposition Will there only be two ports working next week i don't know i can only test what i'm sent that's what i've got to say about this um hopefully um, this is just a one-off. If you've got one of these, or if you've got any other Toolkit RC stuff in general, how's the reliability been? I have had some people saying, yeah, you know, it's not as reliable as it should be. Bearing in mind this is a budget product. This is super, super cheap. So do you really expect reliability? Well, I think you should. I don't care how cheap a product is, it should work as advertised and it shouldn't break within weeks of buying it. So please relate your own experiences with Toolkit RC into the comment section on this video. I'd really like to hear them. I'm sure plenty of other people would like to hear them because they're important. Very important we share the knowledge. And there you go. Um, as usual, even if I get free stuff, I tell it like it is. I'm not gilding a lily for anybody. And uh, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. You make it all possible because if I was surviving off affiliate links, you know, I'd be, I'd be saying, yeah, don't worry about the fourth port, it's fine. <laughs> but it's not. It's terrible, Muriel. There you go. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Um, sorry about this um, different scene, this different venue. What I will do, actually, is I will tear this down in another video. We'll look at, that, at how well it's constructed and just see if that was a, um, a design fault, an anomaly, a faulty component or whatever. We'll see what's made it fail. But I don't want to make this video any longer than it is. And it's something else for you to look forward to on RC Model Reviews. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll spot you later.